Kate from Kate and Barrel Designs in Tucson, Arizona. So I picked up this cute Dixie uh, desk vanity um, that has that grody kind of yellowy finish. I'm sure it used to be more white than yellow, uh, but over time they just kind of tend to uh, <laughs> turn this kind of color. So I wanted to do something completely different with it, make it completely over. So the first thing I'm doing right here is I am spraying this down with a degreaser in order to make sure that I'm cleaning off all the gunk and grossness that has been sitting on this piece for who knows how long. Uh, I picked it up at a local thrift store, so wasn't probably taken care of the way it needed to be, although it's a great structure perfectly sound, um, which is really awesome. The one thing about these Dixie pieces is that they always have these white laminate tops. You can see how bright white that top is on it. So they're very slick. So you always want to make sure that after you clean, you're going to go ahead and sand down. You can scuff sand. Um, the piece in order to make sure that your paint is going to adhere as the best it possibly can. So right here I'm going through with my Surf Prep Pro sander. I'm using uh, my uh, contour pad and going through and just kind of scuff sanding as much as I possibly can and also smoothing out um, any any kind of rough areas. So on the top edge of the piece there were some rough spots that I wanted to make sure I kind of smoothed out so it looks really nice when my paint eventually goes over it. So notice also I'm wearing my mask. I probably should also be wearing my glasses but I'm really bad about that. Uh, so the next step right here is I'm going to use my Stingray sprayer from Wise Owl and the Wise Owl Steam Blocking Primer in Dark Gray. Uh, my idea for this piece changed as I progressed through doing this. So you'll see as we continue on um, kind of how things changed a little bit. I probably could have gone with the regular standard gray, uh, but I had the dark gray already open, so I just went for it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm straining my primer so I'm not um, getting any like big chunks or bits or anything in, in the actual can because I want to make sure that my paint is nice and smooth with no contaminants. Um, so I'm just going through, I'm making sure I'm mixing my primer as well before I put it in. It needed, it, I had to open up a new can, so needed some, some really heavy mixing. And then I'm also going to go ahead and put a little bit of water in there to give it a little bit, uh, made it a little bit thinner. Didn't necessarily need the water. The primer's usually pretty good on its own, to be honest, but I do like to add a little bit of water here, mix it up after it's done straining. So go ahead, get my clamp on, attach my hose. It's a nice quick connect hose, really, really easy. I'm actually not, I've just started spraying maybe a few months ago officially with this sprayer and it does make it a lot easier, um, especially when you're, when you're putting your primer on. So I'm going through, I'm spraying. The one thing I'll tell you is on, on the sprayer, it has two, it, the nozzle on the front, you have three settings essentially. And with the settings, um, I like to make sure that my, my nozzle looks vertical when I'm going up and down vertically. And then I'll change it to horizontal when I'm moving horizontally across my drawers. So again, just making sure I'm getting a nice, coat of the dark gray primer, stain blocking primer, as I go through. So 
sorry, I stepped a little bit out of the, of the frame. There we go. You can see how easy it goes on. There's not much to it. I did want to make sure I got the back a little bit. I don't normally paint or spray the back of my pieces. However, <clears throat> on this desk piece on the side that doesn't have the drawers, uh, it is the same kind of color throughout the entire piece. So I went ahead and sprayed that back part as well. So here you can see I started spraying um, my my piece. I I do have a coat of paint underneath this coat that I'm currently putting on on the front, and that's because I wanted to blend uh, this piece with a bunch of different colors. However, I just wasn't feeling it. It just wasn't working for me. So instead, I went ahead and mixed my vintage duck egg and my Icelandic mist together and created this color that I'm currently spraying on, which I felt was really pretty and feminine and just worked really well. Uh, so I decided to go with the solid color for this piece instead of doing a blended finish. Again, sometimes things just don't go the way you think they're going to in your head. So you just adjust, pivot and try something else. After I finish spraying, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just spray my hardware gold. Uh, I just use kind of a, a spray, gold spray paint that works really well and that's, that's how I finish a lot of my hardware. After I finish spraying two coats of the Icelandic Mist and Vintage Duck Egg Mix, I went ahead and took my super fine foam pad with my, um, Surf Prep Pro sander and just went through and smoothed out my paint. I do use a chalk synthesis paint most of the time and this was a chalk synthesis mix uh, from Wise Owl and so I want to make sure that it gives it a really nice smooth finish in order to do that. I either do a hand sand or I can use my Surf Prep Pro like I'm doing here. After I finished sanding, I went ahead and started painting the trim, uh, the top trim of the of the vanity desk with uh, the heavy metals gold dust from Wise Owl. This did take a couple coats and I had to go back over and reapply. You'll see as we go on again, pivot and adjustment happens here. So um, I wasn't planning on putting a transfer on this piece, but I happen to have this Cosmic Rose leftover transfer uh, from Redesign by Prima. And I was looking at the colors with it and they worked perfectly with the Icelandic Mist Vintage Duck Egg kind of mix that I had going on. So I decided why not I'll go ahead and apply a transfer as well. So I didn't follow any specific pattern with the transfer. I just kind of wanted to place it um, 
sporadically on the drawers. So I just had, like I said, this was leftover. So I'd already used some of it on a different piece that I had done for a client. So this was me just kind of using up bits and sheets that I already had. Um, and that's, that's kind of what I did here. So I went ahead and put this on the three side drawers. And then also you'll see right here on that smaller drawer. So I use that extra piece right there and put that on that uh, top drawer as well. Transfers are really, really easy to use. I know sometimes people get really scared of them. Um, it's basically you, you set it up, you, you press down uh, to get it to stick. Once you know where you're gonna position it, you press down. I like to use, you can see in the video, I'm doing this method where I kind of just lift up the edge and then rub in front of it and lift and rub in front of it and lift. And that's kind of how I continuously work the, the piece. So my metallic had dried, so I just went ahead and added another coat while I was in the middle of things. So again, just you can see me fiddling, seeing where I wanted to position things. Again, I had a different vision for this piece completely. I wasn't planning on even utilizing a transfer with it. It just happened to work out that way. The letters are always harder to get off. They don't always want to stick as well as like the flowers do. So it's a little bit of a struggle sometimes, but you just kind of continuously just rub a little bit harder, get, get a few air bubbles in there, and then it will release just fine. Smooth it out. Keep on going. So after I finished the transfers everywhere on the front, and I think I stuck a little one down on the side in the corner too, I decided I was gonna go ahead and clear coat the top of this piece. Um, clear coat is typically a little bit stronger than a wax. I do like to wax my pieces, so the base of this piece will get waxed, and you'll see that shortly. However, right here, all I'm doing is, after I strained my Wiseowl matte varnish, I am just spraying a top coat for the first layer on here to get that going. I ended up doing um, three coats and actually after the mat, I went ahead and used a satin on top of it as well. After I did my first coat, I was waiting for it to dry. So I went ahead and started on waxing the base of the piece. Right here I'm using Wiseowl's Clear Wax with uh, I believe the one inch uh, brush, round brush. And I just go through and just apply the wax. This is really great too because this wax mostly soaks in. It's not one of those waxes where it's not gonna soak into the paint. So there's some waxes that really just sit on the surface. Um, this is also an all natural uh, product so no mineral spirits or any kind of chemicals in here which is really nice and that's also why I like to use it so just make sure I go ahead and, and get that all waxed up and let it sit and dry so I told you that this was a piece that had some changes that I went through so one of the changes was after I got the transfer on I realized that essentially the gold um, that I use for the, the gold dust on the top edge 
there shown in the video wasn't going to work for me. So I actually went ahead and started applying gold accenting with a gilding wax to other parts of the of the piece and definitely realized that that gold dust just wasn't going to work. So I'm actually going to go ahead and apply this wax over the gold dust. Uh, it works great. Within 24 to 48 hours, it dries solid. I always clear wax my piece before I apply gilding wax. So you do not want to try to apply your gilding wax and then clear wax. Um, what will happen is the clear wax will actually just pull the gilding wax right off because it reactivates it and it will just, just end up pulling it right off or smudging it all over the place and you don't want that to happen. And you can see in the video too is that there are a few spots where I hit a part that I don't want the gold wax to be on and I just take a little bit of the clear wax and, and can wipe it off, which is great. So it's really forgiving uh, if you get it in some areas that you don't want it to be. And I just apply it with my finger. Some people use brushes. I just go ahead and apply it right with my finger. So here you can see, like I said, I'm, I wanted it, the golds just weren't matching and I wanted to have more gold accenting. So I decided to go over the gold dust with the gold gilding wax that I have. And I think it worked really well actually. So again, I'm just applying it with my finger, nothing fancy, no special tools needed to put this on. So you can see here, I'm just adding the final kind of touches again with the gold gilding wax. So one thing that isn't shown um, is that I went ahead and added some transfers to the top of the piece and also that side area that I'm working on right now at the bottom to add kind of some extra pizzazz and, and uniqueness to it. And I think it really tied everything together. So, um, and then I went ahead and sealed those top transfers with another coat of wax after it had already been varnished. I'm also, please make sure that you check out the links for products if you're interested in any of the products that I used here today. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that subscribe button and leave your comments and questions. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one.